The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You will hear me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us be on our way. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You probably saw my sermon title seems like it's a, a title of a, a term paper. The Holy Spirit of Christ. Well, you know, I could skirt around and say many different things. I could say, you know, uh, the breath that created the wisdom, the light, the life, the truth. There could be millions of things I could say as a definition or an understanding in a human sense what is truly the mystery of God. The person of the Holy Spirit is the mystery of God. It is the mystery of God because, you know, uh, I remember from my days as a student hearing how Martin Luther thought that there would be like a little Christ running around in your heart with a little lantern as that uh, in the tabernacle of your splechna of your soul kind of helping you out there and that this battle is with this guy up here and this is another heart this is a seat of understanding supposedly for us where we come to make decisions where we come to well do a lot of damage in our lives and in the world <laughs> but it's not without hope because that's really the beautiful person of the Holy Spirit is not only our guide, but he helps us with that, that battle. And you've heard me say this a while back when I ta talk about this, this, the cardia here. And I did a lot of Greek study. Even though I failed Greek successfully three times in seminary, I have to say, God bless the resources that are out there. And the, the Greek was beautiful and fascinating for um, this gospel. Because I automatically assumed that when Jesus was talking about peace in here, that he was using the word that would mean shalom. And he really was using this word erpin, which means uh, a wholeness, a, a completion a um, the peace that happens when things come together and unify and we, we that, that word gives us the warm fuzzies when we hear it in the right way in the Christian way in the faithful way in the love and agape love being a love and also love was different here too it still used agape but it was more it was more like commanding them if you loved me, if you f were convicted in this love, if you were committed to this love, then you would know. Then you would know why these things are happening that are going to be happening pretty soon to me. And that they are from him, the Father, and I love the Father. 
And Jesus is saying, don't be troubled by this, but this peace that I'm going to give you with my Holy Spirit is going to be something that is the greatest force in the world. It is the greatest force in the world. And we think, you know, there is a big, giant, huge gift basket of many things God gives us. Grace. Uh, yes, agape love. And agape love having a different facet of understanding even in this text. And the peace of Christ having an, another understanding. And... This little cross I'm wearing today, I had found this cross, and I guess it is more of a, comp they consider it a confirmation cross, and has the, the dove of the Holy Spirit on it. And, you know, regardless of how problematic the formation of the steeple has been and shackling the church in some ways, we must think of that confirmation in our soul, that splat now, of the true church of God. The true church of God is the life in our soul. The life in our soul that is the light of Christ, that is the truth and the beauty, and that is the great blessing to learn discernment. Learn discernment not affected by the unholy trinity that the cardia keeps trying to put back in there. But that discernment that gets us to think, I want to love and live like Jesus. I want to be the best I can be. I do believe in myself in the right way. And I know I have to keep adding that in. And, you know, some people say, well, you're adding another lens onto that scripture, Nicole. But then look at the culture we're living in. And I, you know, I talk about this a little bit, that we've been awakened to the wrong senses of how we are to find justice and how are we are supposed to punish and judge and do this and do that and divide. We are not supposed to divide. If anything, the New Testament, the Holy Spirit shows us a God who is unifying us through this peaceful introduction to this beautiful dove, to this beautiful light, to this beautiful person that is the Christ who is within us. The Christ who is within us, who we don't need to be shackling up Jesus, okay? What would Jesus do? Are we still doing, hi, what would Nicole do? What will Sam do? What will Jean do? What will Lorraine do? Yeah. Or, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we gotta, we have to, we have to love ourselves in the sense like, hi, God, I'm so grateful you made me. I thank you for my parents. I thank you for the angels I have in my life. I gotta believe more in angels than I do in demons, you know. I mean, and that, that's another whole other perspective there, too, that the cardia can interfere with. I love, um, you know, it was a week or two ago that I was watching with dear friends uh, the Luther film where he was torturing himself in his room, and it looked like he was arguing with his Beelzebub, is arguing with his inner demon, you know, because he, he really, he, he was going to put his feet to the fire. And, you know... The Christian journey ain't easy. It's just not. And Jesus, in his most beautiful and loving way, had to prepare these extraordinary men and women to go and do and be for the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God ain't just reading scripture and looking at somebody standing here. I mean... I am to be a beacon God uses for you to do what God needs you to do best. 
Even if you feel like your head's going to fall off from a sinus infection or a sore throat or whatever, you, you, you uh, plunge ahead, you go forward. I never forgot, it was a couple years ago, I was um, doing uh, student um, vickering, um, and it was way in the beginning, and I was really sick where I couldn't even hear. And we were in the dark and we were doing this service where we were the, each time we had a reading from different areas of the room, uh, the light would go on. And then, like, by the time they turn on the light, they're going to see, like, you know, I'm, my eyes are bloodshot and I have no voice left to read. <laughs> but, uh, and when I, I told um, my first pastor this, um, he just laughed. He says, oh, I've done that many a time. I've had to do that many a time. And, uh, you know, the work of the gospel ain't going to do itself, you know. Yes, we have modern conventions because I scared away a lot of people from coming in person today because they don't want to get the plague that I have or that my sweet husband has as well. Uh, <laughs> so we have a lot of people turning, tuning in via cyberspace today and, and so on and so forth. But that should say something too. This is the most oldest form of the church, okay, uh, of the, quote, beginning of the church, is the house church. A lot of people don't take it seriously. Oh, huh. You know, you don't have this, you don't do that. No. When the world says no, God says yes. And I, I have said that because the Holy Spirit has taught my heart that. The Holy Spirit has unified my soul to reconcile myself to where my life and journey is. Okay, I'm talking too much about myself. But what is a witness anyway? Next Sunday we're going to be hearing about the Holy Trinity uh, and uh, the communion of the saints. And I think it's a beautiful thought to think how many people, uh, maybe we have even run across our saints. I knew I knew somebody who I uh, met uh, with the, the church I served out west briefly. And I think he was like a little angel or messenger from God because he shared a beautiful message with me, um, keeping me encouraged and saying, you know, God's got to make his journey the way he's going to make it. So, I mean, hey, he's the best roller coaster designer, isn't he, God? Because it ain't going to go like this. <laughs> No, journey's going to go like this and all over the place and, you know, get out that Dramamine if you need it. But uh, <laughs> do our lives preach? What do we teach of Christ's word? Well, I think it should be very easy for people of real, solid, true faith today to see... A lot of things that we're hearing in the world, the gospel is needing us to scream the truth of God's love and peace and unity and break away from that belly button theology of the world revolving around the self and navel gazing. We are not about division. We are not to be condemning judges. We are certainly never to turn Jesus into a politician uh, or the warrior Rambo Messiah. That even as I said, when he was on earth, there was those who were wondering, you know, when is he going to start riding in on a stallion and kick the Romans' butt and then kick the Pharisees' butt? Jesus wanted us to see God's vision because God flowed through him because he is the son of God because he is the Messiah and when we have those moments of doubt you know and the light the enlightenment built our big giant tower of Babel I mean we look at that you know text today it sounds kind of goofy at first when I was reading it I'm like that stuck out like a sore thumb for me why was this even included but then you know, we're building that tower to touch the finger of God and reach things in our own way and do it our own way. So God's like, okay, well, 
I want I want to divide this so you humble yourselves and you grow and develop and you grow and develop in unique ways but it just seems very strange because we do hear the spirit dividing in the Old Testament but um, we have to worry about today or we shouldn't worry now see I, I need to repent of that word right now quit worrying cut that out <coughs> we need to be dis discerning and concerned with the, the cardia here, this, this little seat of affections, this other heart. This other heart, a lot of times, say, okay, God, I'm kind of figuring this out. Or, you know, we kind of do I want to, I want to with him. Even when I've had my deepest moments of connections with the Lord, which when I'm praying with him, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I start praying about different things. I, you know, I hear very faintly, I hear very faintly his voice and like, Lord, I want to see you. I want to hear you louder. I want to, I want to. And so, and then, and then other stuff comes in and that other stuff coming in is the things of the world. And then uh, the, the other spirits that we ain't supposed to be listening to, but the world's very successfully listening to. Um, I watched again my favorite musical, Godspell, and um, it just totally convicted for me all the symbolic uh, hippy-dippy stuff in that beautiful musical from when I was five years old, it was made. Um, uh, Jesus had this heart on his forehead. And even at the end when they were taking off their makeup, uh, that he had painted on them and he showed him a mirror and they said oh hey that's you somebody went to go try to take off his heart and he said oh. and you know we believe and we confirm something that we really kind of still don't understand fully human fully divine incarnate in the flesh all this other stuff yada 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 but this love is something that can never be erased from God, can never be erased from the mind or heart of God. And the mind, the mind and love and heart of God is planted as that seed by the beautiful sacrifice, the loving sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, something that still kind of defies our logic. Why would God do that? But through that death and that resurrection is that glory. That glory is that, that other gift and that big giant basket that is opened. And that glory is when we realize the power of the Lord's Holy Spirit is the life within me and the light within me. He created me as he created everyone else. And he gave me free will that still doesn't make sense, but <laughs> it makes sense enough in this in, in that it is divine, unconquerable love. And this divine love is this commitment and this great promise. This great promise of God that this love is everything that he has made for us. And if we are creating too, what are we doing? How are we creating a witness for the world? How are we unifying the world? If we're say, some people say they've awoken, oh, uh, have woken up to a true gospel. That true gospel can't be about um, hatred, division, erasing, uh, uh, eye for an eye, quote, slash, justice. It cannot be all these nasty, evil things that completely and utterly go against the truth of God. And the Bible is the Bible of God. It is the inspired word 
of God that has been written over many years, many centuries, by people who had the Holy Spirit open the eyes of their heart and the scripture revealed to them the scriptures that were placed in their heart here. And then the witness, the witness of, of Jesus themselves, even the witness centuries later by others of seeing Jesus, of noting Jesus, of sensing Jesus. That word is inerrant in some, in some ways when it comes to the Holy Spirit. We don't like talking about the Holy Spirit because we don't understand it. So then why am I preaching it? Why do we live? What is life's purpose? Life's purpose goes beyond just, okay, eat, drink, and be merry, and tomorrow we die. Life's purpose is living, living by the breath and wisdom of God. Loving God as best as you can, even more so, even more when you fail Him at times. And, you know, we remember one of the scriptures that, um, you know, Peter kept saying in some ways, I, I filios you, you know, I a brotherly love for you. I have brotherly love for you. You know, Jesus kept saying, do you love me? Do you love me? And, you know, he's starting to get his feelings hurt. But Jesus kept saying, agape, do you agape me? Do you agape me? Do you have that kind of love? We have the capacity to make that kind of love, you know. We have the capacity to grow that kind of love. What I think was interesting, right after 9-11 uh, took place, I was talking with um, my um, dear pastor friend, who we, I study with him every Saturday. And, you know, I remember him saying, um, we were talking about what happened after 9-11, that all of a sudden, for a moment, the people had a spark of coming together and acting in the sense of the gospel. Even people who weren't people of faith. People were just like, you know, this kind of stuff can't happen. This kind of evil can't happen. But they started coming together for a moment. And then, then it gets intellectualized again and disappears into the fabric of our um, all too worldly, <laughs> self-involved worlds. We all have little worlds, yes. We all have little worlds that um, this starts to form, but the heart needs us to go past that. That's why I love the image of the butterfly. I love the butterfly's wings are a lot like that cross, where they come out like here, and they come up a little like this, and they're open, and, the, and, and you are completely open. And then you soar and you take off. And hey, they started from a little caterpillar, so there is hope, right? How's our little caterpillar selves doing this morning? Well, I feel a little bit better than a slug today, but um, welcome to the world of medical science. But God needs us to power through. God needs us to not be afraid. We have to take on the challenges in our world today. We really need to take it on with a great open heart. That heart only gets stronger. And we think sometimes we open ourselves up, we get more vulnerable. God teaches us the opposite. When I fail in my repenting, in my confession, in my aha moments of, of speaking with God in prayer, He lets me know. He lets me know. I, I, I heard Him say very faintly this morning, and 
I kid you not, I it, it just about gave me chills, but he says, you know, he said about laying your life down for a friend. He started talking about that, and he started talking about, I love you, I need you to keep focusing on your witness to help others, to love others, to be for others, to be for others. And that is, that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is this great force, this rushing wind that molds us, that changes us, that transforms us, especially when we break down the barriers of uh, this heart here, this seat of judgment, this seat of intentions, uh, this seat of affections, and have this heart that also can have problems. It's got a lot of soot down there that, you know, God still finds ways to work through us. If we but reaped even a little bit more of that mustard seed, if we but believed even more in the light of His Holy Spirit touching our hearts daily, as we, we count our heartbeats, or we count uh, our breaths, or when we say we love you to uh, our husbands or wives or friends and family. This is God at work. So Pentecost is the foundation of the church but it really ain't about the steeple. It is so much more about the people. It is truly about the people, but not about the people in the say, as I said, in the right way. <laughs> but God needs us to be unified with a grand love and a grand peace that is committed to his mission in the world. If we realized Jesus' mission in the world, I don't think we'd recognize planet Earth. We'd be like, you know, wait, what is this place? <laughs> we'd be like, oh, okay. Um, but this is what God needs us to do. And um, we must realize this truth. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Lord Jesus, we thank you for how you shape each and every one of our hearts and you help us gird up for the battle, the, the battle of the wills within us and the bondage of the world and that will as well. Help us to break the shackles of our sin and our uh, other things that we think are uh, a Tower of Babel gospel to uh, dealing with the postmodern world. Help us be a true, loving people of faith. Help us to be your true apostles. We love you and we praise you, O Christ, our great Redeemer and our beautiful Holy Spirit.